Okay, this video is a continuation of rational functions. Uh, these, these equations will be a little more complex, but we're still just finding horizontal asymptote, vertical asymptote, x and y intercepts. All right, so let's just look at this. Okay, so my first equation, x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 3x minus 10. Walk through the same steps we did. Horizontal asymptotes first. Fabio Botno eats DC. Look at the power. Highest power on top is x squared. Highest on the bottom is x squared. Exponents are the same. That means e to dc. So divide the coefficients. Well, it's just 1 over 1, which means y equals 1. Vertical asymptotes. All right, I need to take the denominator, factor it completely. So if I multiply, I have to add, multiply to negative 10, but add to negative 3, which means negative 5 and 2. So x minus 5 x plus 2. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve it. So x is 5, x is negative 2. x-intercepts. Remember the rule for x-intercepts. That means that I take the top, x squared plus 1, set it equal to 0. Well, x squared equals negative 1. Well, I can't take the square root of a negative number, which means there is no x-intercept. So we just put none for now. It can happen, all right? It would be imaginary, and we're not going to go there with this stuff, all right? So that's x-intercept. That's taken care of. What about y-intercept? The y-intercept rule says you take all the x's and make them zero. So I have 0 plus 1 over 0 minus 3 times 0 minus 10. So I have 1 over negative 10. So my y-intercept is 0 and negative 1 10. So it's barely under the y-axis, but it's there. All right, so now let's just put our pieces together. If the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 1, okay, vertical asymptotes, I have two of them. So I'm going to have one at x is 5. So draw that in. and one at x is negative 2. Use your straight edge, make them nice. All right, now, x-intercept, I don't even have one. So it's not hitting the x-axis anywhere. Keep that in mind as we visualize a picture. y-intercept, 0, negative, 1 tenth. Well, it's just barely under the x-axis, but it's there. All right, now, <clears throat> remember the parent function. Now, this one's different because it has three sections. Here's section A section B, section C. You can see they're divided by the asymptotes. And we have a top and bottom of each section. Now, all I know anything about is section B here at the bottom. And I know the line has to go through it, but it can't cross the x-axis because I don't have an intercept. So what that tells me is my curve does this. Remember, it gets close to these asymptotes, but it never crosses them. And it has to go through that little y-intercept. So that's what this part looks like. All right, and it's kind of wonky, but it happens. Now, now I have to back up and look at section A. I need to figure out there's, there's going to be an L. It's either going to go up or it's going to go down. And i got to figure out, is it in the top or the bottom? So what I have to do is take an x value over here in section A, which would be 1, 2, 3, negative 3. So I'm going to find out what's the y value if f is negative 3, or x is negative 3, sorry. So I do negative 3, square it, add 1 over negative 3 squared time, or minus 3 times negative 3 minus 10. All right, let's figure this out. Negative 3 squared is 9, plus 1 is 10, positive. Down here I've got 9 that will be negative 9 times negative 1 is a, is a positive 9, plus 9 minus 10. Well, I got 10 over 8, right? That's 18 minus 10, which would be 8. That's a little bit more than, that's 5 fourths, so it's more than 1. All right, so it's just above this line up here, where x is 3, it's just right here. So that means my curve is doing this. Remember, it's not going to cross those asymptotes. All right? We've done that section. Now, jump over to section C. We need to find out, is it top or bottom over here? 
pick an x value over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, where x is positive 6. And let's run it through the same equation. 6 squared, let's see, 6 squared is 36 plus 1. That's 37. On the bottom, I got 36 minus 6 times 3 is 18 minus 10, which gives me 18 minus 10 is 8. Okay, well, 36, 37 over 8 is, it goes into 37, what, four times? Four point something. So my y value is positive four something. So I know it's up here. So it's doing this business, okay? That's what that tells me, all right? Now, again, do not give up on this process. It's long and tedious, but you can do it. I'm sorry, my work is crazy. Let's try one more. All right. x squared minus 9 over x squared minus 4. Okay? A horizontal asymptote. Bobbio botno eats DC. Exponents are the same as they are on the top and bottom. That means it's an eats DC. So I divide the coefficients. Well, that's just 1 over 1, which is just 1. So horizontally, it's y equals 1. Vertical asymptote, I have to take the bottom and factor it. Hopefully, you recognize this as a difference of squares. So if I solve these, x equals negative 2, x equals positive 2. Okay. X-intercept, I set the top equal to 0. Solve it. Well, x squared equals 9. Took the square root of both sides. x is be careful here, this is a positive and a negative 3. So you have two solutions, remember? When you take a square root, you got to do the positive and negative. So I'm going to have positive 3, 0, and a negative 3, 0. Okay. All right, y-intercepts, I set every one of the x's to 0. So for y-intercept, I got 0 minus 9 over 0 minus 4. So that's positive 9 fourths. So where x is 0, y is 9 fourths. And we know that that's like 2 and a quarter. Okay? Let's graph what we know. y equals 1. Asymptotes, a vertical one, x equals negative 2. And x is positive 2. Intercepts, all right, where x is 3, 1, 2, 3, or that's negative 3, but we have one at negative 3, and we have one at positive 3, okay? And we have a y-intercept at 0, 9 fourths. Now remember, 9 fourths, 4 goes into 9 two times with 1 fourth left over, so 2, 4, 3, 5. So that means at, right, right about here, it's going to cross the y-axis. Okay, guys, now... Use your clues. When you have three sections, there's something in every section, either in the top or the bottom. One of one of the two. Can't be both. It's one of the two. So use your clues. Guys, look, you have an x-intercept here. It has to hug the asymptotes. So that's doing that. Let's look at this x-intercept. It's hugging the asymptotes, curving around. So what's happening in the middle? There is no x-intercept, so it's not going to cross the x-axis, but the line has to go through this point. So it makes a little U. A parabola goes right through that point. Okay, so you can see the three sections. Okay, let's try one more if you're up for it. Here we go. Horizontal asymptote. Look at your power. Bobbio Botno eats DC. Exponents are the same. So this is an eats DC. And it's 1 over 1. Coefficients are 1 and 1, so it's just y equals 1. Vertical asymptote, I have to take the bottom and factor it. So factor it using box or whatever method you need to. See, so I need x plus 4 or x minus 1. So if I set these equal to 0, x equals negative 4, x equals 1. So those are my two vertical asymptotes. x intercepts, all right? Set the top equal to 0 and solve it. 
Well, that means I need to factor it. If I factor this, I get x plus 2, x plus 1. So I have to set each factor equal to 0 and find those x coordinates. x is negative 2, so that means I have an intercept at negative 2, 0 and negative 1. So negative 1, 0. Okay, to do y-intercept, remember I take all the x's and make them 0. So 0 squared plus 3 times 0 plus 2 over 0 squared plus 3 times 0 minus 4. So I have 2 over negative 4, which is negative 1 half. So it crosses the y-axis at 0, negative 1 half. Now if I take these characteristics and graph what I know, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. I have a vertical asymptote where x is negative 4. And a vertical asymptote where x is 1. All right, x-intercept at negative 2, 1, and an x-intercept at negative 1. I'm sorry, negative 2, 0, and negative 1, 0. So guess what? My line's connected right there, guys. And then look at the y-intercept. It's at 0, negative 1 half, so it's down here. So what do you suppose is happening? It's going to hug that asymptote. Okay, and it's going to hug the asymptote over here. We've crossed the x-axis right there. It's not bouncing, it's going through the x-axis, okay? And that's a unique feature we don't see a lot, but it did happen here. Now, I have other sections here. I got this section over here on the left. I gotta figure out, is the curve above or below this asymptote? So I need to pick an x value over here, which would be, let's see, negative five, and let's run it through the equation. So what would f of negative five be? Well, negative five squared is 25. Minus, negative 5 times 3 is 15, so it would be minus 15 plus 2, which that's 10 plus 2, which is 12. Bottom, negative 5 squared is 25. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15 minus 4. So this is going to give me 10 minus 4, which is 6. Guess what? That's a 2. That's a positive 2. So over here at negative 5, the graph is right here. It's doing this. Okay. So I need to now figure out what's happening on the right side of my graph. So I'm going to run through the same process, but I'm going to use x is 2 because it's to the right of that asymptote. So f of 2. 2 squared is 4 plus 2 times 3 is 6 plus 2. What is that? 12. 2 squared is 4 plus 2 times 3 is 6 minus 4. That's going to give me 10 minus 4 is 6. Well, guess what? We're back to a 2. So over here, it's a 2. So it's doing this business up here. It's making the L up here. Okay. So hopefully you're getting this. It's making a little bit more sense as you go along. I know it's tedious, but you can do it. Now I want you to try this one for class, and we'll see how you do.